afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the DCS Week of Excellence Television Forum. I am your host, Carissa Shaw, and today we'll be focusing on the theme, diversity in the television industry. Diversity in the television industry. A warm welcome is extended to everyone who is on today. I'm definitely excited, and I know you are excited for what this forum has in store for us. But before we go any further, we'll be having our devotion, which will be done by Rajani Miller. Is Rajani here? Yes, I'm here. Yes, she is. Okay, over to you, Rajani. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Carissa. Unfortunately, I won't be able to turn on my camera, but let us begin nonetheless. Please bow your heads with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the chance to meet and greet with each other and to have discussions and little moments like this. As we go into a brief devotion, please be with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So I am going to sing one song and then I'm going to share a verse with you that's been on mine. And the song is As the Deer. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth to be. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. Oh, you alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship. Should be. Amen. Thank you very much. And the verse we'll be looking at is 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. And it says, We all, with open face, beholding, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And many of us know this verse summarized to say, by beholding, we become changed. Now, this forum is for TV emphasis students. And many times we find ourselves looking at things, watching things, preparing to put things in front of other person's eyes. But we forget that by beholding certain things, by beholding things especially at a high frequency, we become changed. And it goes down to a biological level where even in the brain, when you watch something being done, there are certain uh, neurons inside your brain called mirror neurons that react as though you are the person that is doing it. What I want us to remember from this is that as we look at different things, as we listen to different things, we have to guard well the avenues to our soul. We have to ensure that we are putting ourselves at the highest chance, at the best, we're giving ourselves the best chance of making it into the character that Jesus wants us to have and to be as much like him as possible. All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, it's very difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult to avoid looking at certain things, avoid listening to certain things, avoid giving our attention to certain things because that is what our society is pushing towards us. That is what we are accustomed to. But as we prepare ourselves for your kingdom and for your coming, we ask that you will Help us to guard the avenues. In fact, Lord, you guard the avenues to our souls and remind us when we should or shouldn't watch certain things or listen to certain things. 
Thank you so much and please guide and bless the rest of this forum. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you very much for that lovely devotion, Rajani. Uh, for those who are just joining us, welcome to the DCS Week of Excellence Television Forum. We're gathered under the theme, Diversity in the Television Industry. Please remember to follow the Department of Communication Studies on our social media platforms uh, on Instagram at DCS underscore NCU, on Facebook at DCS, on Twitter at DCS underscore NCU, and on YouTube at NCU DCS TV. Now getting right into it, now would you rather? So we are going to quickly raise our hands. I'll acknowledge you and you'll open your mics. And you let me know, would you rather? Number one, would you rather have the ability to instantly watch any TV show ever made or have the power to bring back one canceled TV show of your choice? Repeating, would you rather have the ability to instantly watch any TV show ever made or have the power to bring back one canceled TV show of your choice? Are the hands going up? Yes, Alia, go ahead. So I would rather um bring back one of the series, well, series titled uh, Made that was cancelled back in 2022 for no reason, I think. Well, on my side, I don't think there was a reason because it was a really nice movie, but I would bring back that series. All right, thank you very much. Number two. Would you rather have a perfect TV setup with an enormous screen, but only have one channel, or a mediocre TV with access to every channel imaginable? Would you rather have a perfect TV setup with an enormous screen, but only one channel, or a mediocre TV with access to every channel imaginable? Let's see whose hand is up. All right, so Ali again, you're on the ball, Alia. Go ahead. Up. Only big screens, no local media thing around here. Only big, nice HD, pretty graphics, and all of that. Yeah. All right, yes, Mrs. Green. So I might sound a little old fashioned, but I prefer to have access to different channels even if it's on a small screen all righty anybody else before we go to our last would you rather all right number three would you rather live in the world of your favorite tv show but as a minor character or have the ability to visit any tv show universe for a day as yourself would you rather live in the world of your favorite TV show, but as a minor character, or have the ability to visit any TV show universe for a day as yourself? Who is taking that one? Any hands? What would you rather? Repeating again. Would you rather live in the world of your favorite TV show, but as a minor character, or have the ability to visit any TV show universe for a day as yourself. Go ahead, Alia. I would rather the TV land, the TV station scene, where we would go and look at the sets and all of that instead of being a minor character. <clears throat> all righty, thank you very much. We have a prize for you, Alia. Thank you for answering those would you rathers. So just stay tuned and we'll speak further on your big surprise that we have for you. Now, from the start of this forum, we have been hearing the word diversity. But what really is diversity? Do we know what diversity is? As communication studies students, as TV emphasis students, do we know what diversity is? Any take? Anyone want to try? What is diversity? 
already. So diversity in television refers to the representation of different races, cultures, genders, sexual orientations, and abilities on screen. According to the Oxford University, diversity is essential in television as it reflects the rich tapestry of human experience and helps to break down stereotypes and promote inclusivity. Imagine turning on your television and seeing a magical world where every individual is unique in their own way. The screen is bursting with a rainbow of colors, showcasing people from all walks of life, coming together to share their stories. This is the power of diversity in television. Diversity is like a vibrant mosaic with each piece contributing to the larger picture. It allows viewers to see themselves reflected on screen, to feel seen and heard in a world that can sometimes feel overwhelming. By embracing diversity, television shows can spark important conversations, challenge societal norms, and open the door to empathy and understanding. So, the next time you tune into your favorite TV show, take a moment to appreciate the diversity on display. It's not just entertainment, it's a celebration of the beautiful Kalido kaleidoscope rather of humanity at this time the privilege is mine to introduce our speaker or presenter for today's forum kemar baker is a versatile tv production freelancer with a wealth of experience in various roles with a background as a camera operator and rigor at phase three production and sports max limited he has honed his skills behind the lens and in the control room as the CG operator. Beyond his professional endeavors, Kemar is a budding entrepreneur spearheading Captain Visuals. Under this banner, he specializes in live stream coverage for a range of events from corporate gatherings to weddings and even funerals. Additionally, he crafts captivating highlight reels dynamic music videos, and stunning graphic design and motion design projects. Kemar Baker brings creativity, technical prowess, and entrepreneurial spirit to every project he undertakes. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Kemar, Bro Kemar Baker rather, as he presents to us. Let's welcome him, everyone. Over uh -huh. to you, Mr. Yes, um, I thank you for that warm introduction. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I am pleased to be here to share in this capacity on, I would say, my experience and everything I've learned so far working in the industry. So as you all just heard, I am Baker. Everyone calls me Baker or Captain. I'm a freelancer. I work with companies such as JNN, TVJ, Sportsmax TV, Scene TV, Phase 3 Production, CVM, where I've done a few ENGs and so forth. I've also worked with smaller scale companies, such as a company here in Mandeville called Snap Media, um, Infinity GFX. I've done weddings with them. I've done I've done different productions with my friends as well. Adrian John, so you guys might know him. I've done a project with the with the um with the Governor General with him already. And it was a great project. Maybe he and I could start a company one day. Um I've also worked on music videos with persons who are already in the music video industry. Um they have done a lot of work and I've also done freelancing work at churches as a camera operator. I, as she mentioned, I'm also a budding entrepreneur. I have done live, live stream coverage at many different places and graphic design work. So I have always loved TV. I love watching TV growing up. It was very fun. I love cartoons, especially. Cartoons are... I was obsessed with cartoons, but at that point, I thought only like in the Asian world and like TV, big companies were able to, you know, 
create a cartoon. But little did I know that nowadays, softwares are evolving and the industry keeps getting better and better where nowadays I can use a PC and create a full animated episode from scratch. You can create it, edit it, do your post-production work, and it comes out good on a single PC. If I had known this in my childhood days, probably I would have been creating cartoons even now. But I thought that it wasn't possible just in this region, especially in my rural area where I'm from, in Mandeville. So working in the industry, I try best to keep an open mind. Um, I look on every day and everyone I meet as an opportunity to learn something new. For example, um, my most recent manager, Michael Edwards, big up to him, he would always say there are 365 days in a year. So learn one thing every day and you will learn 365 new things for the whole year. So I've come to appreciate that thought that, hey, learn something here and there. Today I go to work, I learn something new about the focus ring. Tomorrow I go to work, I'll probably learn a few interview styles because maybe one of the days, let's see, um, let's see the journalist who I'm working with um doesn't let's say the journalist doesn't want to ask the questions or the journalist can't make it and I'm the camera operator behind the ENG. I can ask the question, you know, so I learned that and I would take the step to just say, you know what? Let me just try to do it and learn it. And then it ended up working and persons always congratulate me on it and say, hey, come on, you know, we can send a guy road by yourself, man, make a good interview. So, yeah. So I try my best to keep an open mind while on the job because every practice, every, every person does something a different way. And if I can look at this person and say, hey, let me adapt how this person shoot, I can use that and put it in my everyday work and it will improve myself even and the overall quality of my work. So these basic knowledge, I try to take them, as my grandmother would say, pick sense out of nonsense, you know, and improve what I do. So yeah. So knowing the rules of the industry and understanding how the resources work are little things that will enhance the overall quality of the production knowing how to operate the equipment is a good thing. You know, most times you will get called on a freelance job. It will be to just operate a piece of equipment. So a lot of persons don't bother to say, hey, let me take the initiative and find out about this camera. Find out about the functions, even the switcher. Let me find out how to set it up, you know, how to go about troubleshooting it if something should happen. You know, so... I took that on myself, even from NCU, I used to take out the cameras and just run through the menu, practice shooting a little thing, you know, here and there, because it makes a difference. These things are what persons look at and say, hey, NCU people are well-rounded. You know, we love having them in the industry because hey, here and there. And then most of us who went out with me were very young. We were young. <laughs> So, especially me, I was the youngest among most of my batches. So, when I got in, a lot of persons kind of underestimated because, you know, they were saying, you know, it's a little money from get up, <laughs> you know, from where I'm from. And then my background, a lot of persons, they look at me and say, it's a little puny money. Some money can't shoot nothing, man. But then when I hold the camera and I shoot something, they say, wow, you know. Is good. Even one day, I went on a PMP thing. It was supposed to be on the road. We were supposed to go on a campaign with the persons on the road, but it ended up changing that the shoot that we're doing is going to be done inside of um, the PMP headquarters. So went for the shoot and we were there prepping and heard that it changed and we moved the location. And when we were finished shooting, 
one of the persons who were there, it was a gentleman. He spoke to me and the, the journalist girl. And he was saying that, hey, you guys, I love how you guys are working. You guys are very professional. Where do you guys go? I went to NCU, but the journalist went to UWE. And was questioning us and we were telling him when he was saying, hey, NCU people are always just good enough because especially you young people, you guys come with a lot of creativity and whatnot. And it felt good, you know, to know that I was just here. I I even underestimated the project, you know. It was just an ENG asking fans what they think about PMP. Not fans, so supporters, what they think about PMP and whatnot. And I underestimated the shoot. I was saying, sure, okay, ENG. But at the end, after that gentleman spoke to us, it was really heartwarming to know that he, this guy, he just stood there and he realized that what we were doing is not something to be taken for granted. And it felt really good. So the younger generation, we are doing a really good job. Um, I even did a, a camera lead one day while I was working at Sportsmax. Um, getting that opportunity felt a little weird because I'm not really the guy who just works in the background. I'm not one to step up and say, hey, I'm going to take on this and lead out a crew. But I got the opportunity to do it for the first time and I took it on. And while I was there doing it, many persons were saying, okay, I know you know I do, man. As I said, I'm really well acquainted with the equipment and there, I set up all the cameras for football today, and everything was working. The director was pleased, and they were saying, "Well, you know, we are doing it again this again." And from there on, then I've been setting up a lot of productions. Um, sometimes six cameras, sometimes five, and it has really worked out well. I even learned more about the equipment than I ever knew, and the directors are always pleased. And almost every director I've worked with love working with me. They even take my ideas. Um, sometimes we're doing a show, you know, as I come up, I don't just work with their shots. Well, it's good to work with the director shots. I work with it, but sometimes I might look and I say, hey, you want to try this? And the director might say, yeah, you know, let's try it. And we try it and we end up loving it. And when you watch it on screen, you say, wow, it end up working out. So it feels good to know that you know, they take my points, they take my ideas as a young person. I would say a young professional now because I've been in the corporate world as well doing live streams and persons are pleased. And it's not like one time when it's just males you're around. Nowadays, you have females who are also in coordinator roles who are, you know, who are who are the ones who make the final call. And it's good to be around everybody and know that in an industry that takes so many people, you have to be well-rounded, fast-paced. It's good to know that you go in and you fit in. And you can bring an idea to the table. They accept it. You know, all of these things, it just works out. And then at the end of the day, they're always hey, DCS. NCU people, you know, you guys are so well-rounded and it feels good out there. So while many of us may look at production and think that working in the background when you just sit back and something may never pop up, something may pop up where you have to do something and learning that and taking the initiative to do it worked out well because even for me, I'm not a... Uh, I'm not a speaky, spooky person. You know, I don't really talk a lot. But there are some times when it will call for it where, as I said, as a cam lead, you may have to speak in a meeting. You know, you may have to discuss something with a client. You know, all of those things, it may come up. So all of us may think that you just sit there and, you know, nothing may pop up. Something will pop up. And you may have to just step up to the plate and do more than a behind the scene person as some persons would call it team player in the, on the production 
Um, I want to touch on one more thing. The hours that we work in TV. TV hours are not nice. <laughs> but working in the industry has taught me how to manage my time and how to manage things that I need that I well that I may need while I'm on a production. So for example, you may have a production that lasts for let's say 12 hours. As a camera operator, you may need to bring snacks in your bag, a stool that you may want to sit on, even a blanket sometimes or a jacket, you know, sometimes it may rain while a football match is going on and you still have to shoot because rain doesn't stop football. <laughs> so you still have to shoot. So these long hours teaches you how to really maximize on your time management and, you know, how to get yourself the resources that you may need while you are on a long production so you don't start feeling overwhelmed and, you know, like you're getting out of it, you're losing your focus, you know? So these long hours, don't look at it as a, don't look on it as a bad thing. Look on it as a good thing that you are doing the best for the client to cover either their event or bring their idea across as best as you can. And your time management skills will improve, I'm telling you, because you're not going to want to spend all day on a shoot either. You're going to want to put things in slots to say, all right, take 20 minutes to do this. And if it doesn't get completed in the 20 minutes, we allot an next 10 minutes to wrap it up. And we try to finish it. So yeah, it will, the hours are not bad. It will help with your time management skills and it's a plus, I'm telling you. So yeah, um, so yeah, overall in the industry, I just observe and learn as I go along. Um, I try to be helpful, try to be a team player and I don't judge anybody in a higher position than me. A girl can be my boss, I don't have a problem. Uh, anybody can be my boss, I don't have a problem. And I look at it that way because I was accepted in the industry. When I went in the industry, um, nobody judged me on a level. They just, as I said, many persons just underestimated me because, you know, I, I'm i not the one to speak first in the room and I'm not going to mention that, hey, you know, I can do that. You just have to give me the work and I'll do it. But over time, I learned how to step out of that, how to step out of that shell, and you know, try to hone my skills. And I'm still getting there. We live and we learn. And as I said, I try to learn one new thing every day, cause there's 365 days in one whole year, so we can learn a lot of things every day as the time goes by. Um, what's this year? Oh, my camera is off. Thank you, Solandi. I just saw your message. But yes, that's really it for my for my presentation. I hope you guys can take something from it and you know improve your productions that you're doing. I know most of you are doing production house now. I wish you guys all the best with that and you know. Just keep fighting. The semester is almost over. You guys are doing it. After all, we're DCS. The best. Thank you for having me. Alrighty. Thank you very much, Kemar Baker, for joining us. Uh, a special thank you uh, to you. We definitely learned something. We are excited and we are ready to take your expertise, your insights, your encouragement with us as we strive to be the best version of ourselves. Uh, thank you once again.